now we're going to look at and number one is the half house. You've probably seen it in our members videos if you're a Snake Pit member and we hit it a lot but it's a really important takedown. It's part of the foundation of your takedown series in catch wrestling. So let's get it started. Starting out again, collar and elbow. We're just keeping it simple work from a typical tie that you spend a lot of time in. What I'm doing is going to inside tie again, always working inside tie. If I'm inside, I'm controlling. I don't want him here on me controlling. That's his ties now. I gotta have my ties to make sure I'm controlling this. And when I say my ties, that means I'm controlling the tie with an inside tie, working control from the tie from the very beginning. Um, when I come in on this and drive it down to the wrist all the way, and I get to that nook that I always talk about, that soft spot right there, it fits perfectly. The very bottom, it gives you the best leverage on everything. And it works really good on this too. When, uh, when I take Brandon and snap him, I step. I step and pull at the same time. I'm turning my hips a little bit for a great angle. And I do not snap him to the same side. If I snap him to the same side like this, he's going to come around for a duck hunter and take my back. If you do that against a good wrestler, he's going to get thrown. Okay? So I'm snapping to the side. What works really great on this, this, this is an old catch. You kind of have a trap set over here waiting. It works really well. When I step, boom. I've already got it locked in, and I've got wrist control at the same time. When I do it, and I lock his head in here for the headlock, I'm still keeping that wrist the whole time. I'm squeezing up here. This hand is going to come under at the elbow, right here, and dig to the hip. Okay, I'm not coming across here like a whip over. The whip over usually come a little higher on the shoulder. It's really tough to do against bigger guys, but this you can get away with on anybody. Coming down to the hip and driving, you'll notice he's torquing his body a little bit more when I come here at the hip. As soon as this hand gets to his hip, my left hand over here is going to release his wrist and switch to a chin strap. So the left hand comes off, switches to the chin strap, and I'm holding his chin, cupping it, and I'm squeezing my elbow down. So I'm here like this, I'm squeezing that elbow down and keeping it tight to my body. And, and here comes your pivot. It's something we've worked a lot on. If you notice, my right leg's forward, so it's perfect. I'm not going to be crossing my feet in here. I'm here like this. When I start the pivot, I'm turning and looking at the same time. So I step, I start turning and looking at the same time, pivot back, torch down, to finish the takedown. And we'll finish with a submission on this. It's important to have the underhook here. When Cali still have the chin strap to get the submission, I'm gonna sit out here and I'm gonna squeeze my elbow to my side. And arch up just a little bit. And that's your next one. So now let's deal with back control. Back control is a very, very tough spot to get out of. And in a lot of cases, it's a dangerous position to be in. So we're gonna give you two options today for, for working out of back control when an opponent has his legs around your waist or both hooks in. All right, so if Andrew has my back, first thing I wanna work on, of course, is protecting my neck. I need to get my defensive position first. So as he's controlling and fighting for a choke here, I wanna work and try and get his arm to that side of my, to my head here if I can. Ideally, this is the best place for me to be. If I can get his arm on this side, my neck is no longer in danger. There are other things I need to watch out for, but the majority of, of the danger is on my neck. From here, I need to clear his hooks. I gotta get his legs out from my hips. So I'm gonna pummel my legs back. And what I mean by that, I'm gonna kick straight back and, and come inside of his feet one at a time. So I kick my right leg straight back and I come inside here of his heel. Then I kick my left leg back and I come inside here. I pull his body forward and he goes right over, just like a shoulder throw, and that sets up position. Really easy control, I just flow right into it. All right, so let's work that again. So he gets his hooks in, he starts fighting. Again, immediately I start working for defense. If I can't get this out, let's move this arm out of the way so they can see, and he, I'm working here, he can still control his arm. If I can't get it to the other side of my head, I still want to control it and keep his hand under my armpit on that side so it's stopping the choke, or at least slowing it down. I'm gonna kick my leg back, get inside of his foot, kick my leg back, and pull. As soon as I pull him over, I can transition right to side mount, or bicycle, any kind of top control position. Now we're gonna get into a catch wrestling all bar series, attacking the defensive position. So Andrew's in the high defense. I wanna attack this arm. In order for me to attack this arm, I gotta get his weight off of it. He's strong, he's heavy, it's gonna be hard to attack. So I'm gonna drive my weight into him, pushing him out 45 degrees that way. So from here, I drive my weight into him, 
all his weight comes off of his arm, so I scoop it and I put it right up on top of my leg here. I'm going to use my leg like a shelf. This is going to be a nice, nice strong base here, so I have a lot, of, a lot of leverage here. As I work from here, this arm is going to cut across just like this. I'm going to put my forearm and cutting bone into his, into his crook of his uh, shoulder back here. This hand is going to scoop underneath. As I scoop under, I S grip. And now I want to get some leverage here, so to get that leverage, I'm going to lift with this arm and I'm chop this one down like this. So I'm getting a push-pull type motion with this S grip. So my cutting bone is digging into the back of his arm. As I'm lifting with this arm, I'm cutting the other one down, and that's creating the arm bar. So this is going to go like this and torque it back. Okay, so we want to use the crook of this elbow here for leverage and, and stability. I don't want to get up to here where I have to curl it using my bicep. I just want to get it nice and tight and let the, the natural V of my arm keep him locked in nice and strong. So this is across his arm here. I have that S grip. I lift with the arm and elbow here, not just my muscles, but my whole arm is coming up and I'm cutting down with this cutting bone here. And that's going to create that arm bar. This next one starts very similar to the last one. He's down again on high defense. Same concept. I want to attack the same arm here, so I got to get his weight going that direction. Right? 45 degrees out that way. As I start driving, I'm going to start here, but I'm going to bring my arm down to here on, on the other one too. I want to control from his wrist. I don't want to pull from up here where he's strong. I want to get good leverage and pull from down here low. Okay, so I drive in that weight into him. I bring my arm down. I get some good leverage and pull. Get his arm shelved up here again. This time, Instead of just putting my forearm on top, I'm going to form a wedge with my hand. I'm going to stuff this straight down and kind of put some pressure down on his armpit here. As soon as I start to sink his armpit down, I'm going to step up and step around here. Once I step around, I bring his arm to my chest here like this. I'm going to lock him up nice and tight and I'm going to walk my hips forward. As I walk forward, I'm going to start applying pressure here to the arm bar. The further I go, I'll kind of relieve pressure here, but the further I go out this way, you can see the amount of pressure I'd be sitting on the back of his elbow here, forcing his arm up. So I'm keeping everything locked up again with the crook of the elbows, nice and tight. And as I walk forward, I'm just kind of stretching my back, applying that pressure. If I put too much pressure, he starts to collapse, then I'm going to fall back with him, hang on to the arm, my knees go tight, his thumb goes up, and I finish with an arm bar again this way. So that can be chained together from walking out that direction, he collapses down, we fall back, and we take the arm bar here. Last one for this series, again, starts out the same way. He's in that high defense. I get his arm nice and light by driving his weight 45, get down to the wrist, I pull it up, I shelf it again. Same setup, everything's the same as far as this part goes. Control him again, I come up, this time as I step around, I'm putting my feet together here. Depending on what I want to set up is going to determine which arm has to go through. I'm going to do a rolling arm bar, and I want to roll over my left shoulder, so that means that my left arm it's going to hook onto his arm here. As I do this, I'm going to kick my leg back to his stomach here. This one's going to hook under his neck. I'm going to roll over my right on my left shoulder. As I do, I just pull it right over, nice and easy. It's a very smooth, simple transition. Okay, so let's bring that back up and do it again. So everything up to here, we got to this position, we stuffed him, we got around here. Now, once we position here, my left arm the arm closest to his legs is what's important here. If I roll this one, it sets up a different arm bar. Not wrong, just different. This one is going to hook through here. Okay, my crook of my elbow goes to his elbow. You can padlock your leg if you'd like to. I personally like to. I'm going to bring my rear foot or my left foot to his stomach. As I roll over my left shoulder, my right foot is going to come right up under his neck here, lifting his head. So I come down, I lift his head, bring him over, knees tight, both knees pointing up, good wrist control, and pull. So again, starting here in a collar and elbow, locked up the brand. I'm working that inside tie, you know, coming here, and I'm working that wrist control, trying to keep everything started on the same page. When I come down here and get on the wrist, this time this hand is going to come all the way across the head, and I'm actually going to grab onto his ear when I pull it. So let's turn so we can see all that good stuff. So when I pull him again, it's, it's just like that headlock the, the, to the half house where I'm kind of turning my hips. I'm going here and kind of turning this way. So it's, it's just the opposite of what we just did, going the other direction. I have the ear, I have to pull, but I'm pushing his head away. I'm not taking him tight so he can take my back. I want to push his head away and come in quick 
on the double wrist lock. I don't want to hesitate on this. So when I come in here, I step and turn my hips. I'm shooting this gap quick here. And as quickly as I can, I'm compromising the elbow and then getting weight onto the shoulder. Okay, again, I compromise the elbow here, pulling the thumb as tight as I can into the armpit and getting my elbow up on top of his shoulder out here to the side. Now, once this is all nice and tight, I'm going to start my pivot. And when I pivot, I'm turning and looking at the same time. So everything's compromised, the hand is tight, my weight is down on his shoulder to keep him down. So I'm kind of pushing this motion. I step one, two, turn and look. Push through down and keep my grip. So we've already got the grip, so we're going to finish it with the submission. You see how tight everything still is? I haven't lost anything here. I'm putting his thumb up close to his armpit here, squeezing up this way. Another way to make it tighter is taking his elbow and pushing down a little bit there. But what I want to do to do this the uh, authentic way is get off my knees. I'm going to take two steps going to my right, stepping with the leg closest to that direction. One, two. I'm going to drop my hips down, roll them up. He's already tapping, but we got to finish it. So I'm going on my head and pushing down right there to finish this submission. 